Hello YouTube and hello everyone here. Welcome back to our channel at Trade Pro Academy. And today what I'm going to be breaking down is the one specific thing that turned it all around for me, right? Where I stopped losing money in the markets and actually started making money. Now, a lot of people, everyone watching this is most likely going to think, well, this guy's just going to peddle one specific strategy or tell us that he went to some kind of therapist and completely changed his trading psychology. Um, or show you some kind of system that has some kind of massive 100% win rate or something fantastic, right? Now, none of this is true. And what I talk about today is probably even going to shock many of you. It's so simple yet very, very forgotten or not even thought of. So it's the reframing of what it is that I'm doing in the markets and why. But, right, the simple truth is what helped me stop losing money in the markets and actually progressing and moving towards actually making money in the markets was one thing, making trading boring again, right? So I'm going to be talking about boredom and creating a boring system around trading. Now, that doesn't mean boredom trading where uh, I'm just watching this market, I don't know what to do, and then I just start clicking things just because I don't have anything to do, right? It's creating boredom around trading so you're doing something repetitive and mundane consistently. So let's dive right into this intro and we will talk all about this. So back at the screens here, right, we've got um, some stuff on the screen. We'll, we'll talk about some of these aspects in terms of NASDAQ and some trades, especially how it pertains to the strategy and system that I use to create boredom, right, to, to make things very simplified and just do the same thing over and over again. Now, being the perfect trader, only taking wins, never having red days is not my goal, right? It's impossible to do that. So it shouldn't even be something that is in the realm of reality or something that is in the realm of what I want to accomplish. So it's the first thing that you need to accept as a trader, right? Before anything good can happen, you have to accept that there's going to be risk. You're going to be taking losses and there's not going to be any ounce of perfection realistically. Now, there's going to be aspects of getting really good entries, exits, stuff like that. But the fact is that you're not going to have perfection in the markets and you have to understand that accepting risk is a huge part of it. Think of it as like realistically, every trade that you take, no matter how well thought out what the system is, blah, blah, blah. There's a 50-50 chance that it's going to be a good trade or a bad trade, right? It's split down the middle because everything is dependent on stops that you use, um, how you enter the trade, take profits, all that stuff. <clears throat> the dependency of a good outcome is based on too many, a multitude of different factors. So a massive, massive problem in trading and traders in general is that they have too much emotionality attached to wins, losses and money in general, right? So it's an internal cause for traders to get active in the markets. And when you take a loss, you tend to revenge trade it so you can get that win back so you can get back to green. So you want to win more and more and more and it's never enough. Now, even though trading is an act of actually making money in a zero sum game against some pretty big brains, focusing on your profit and loss, your PL is going to knock you out mentally. So why boredom, right? What's the premise of trading boring and why? Mundane trading and boring trading, right? Just think about it as a different aspect of life. Take a mundane, boring task in life. They're fairly easy and even can be therapeutic, right? They don't cause too much stress. They don't uh, make you lose your mind realistically. You know, okay, it's a, you got to do this. You know how to do it. You've done it a billion times over and over again. And you're just there to get the job done. So this is what we want to create in trading. You're there to get the job done. That's it. You don't want to be overzealous when you win, when you lose, everything falls apart, your world crumbles, right? These are two extremes of the pole that you want to completely evade. We want to understand what balance looks like. So repeating the same thing over and over again without too many internal or external factors affecting that outcome. Now, realistically, any strategy can be profitable. Any system can be profitable. It's just a matter of how you trade it, right? I'm not saying that how I trade is the only way to trade. How someone else trades is the only way to trade. If you can make it repetitive, there's positive expectancy, you make it mundane, and you know how to trade it, that's what's going to work, right? Every person has individual characteristics that might make certain aspects of trading easier, some aspects harder, certain strategies better for them, certain strategies harder, right? So you want to take the emotionality out of trading that no longer controls you, right? As a trader, you can't let the emotions control you. So you want to fully be able to accept risk. 
and trade the areas that present the opportunities without a doubt, win or loss, right? You don't want to be second guessing these aspects. So any trade, like I said before, 50-50, realistically, theoretically, it's 50-50. That's not what my concern is. That's not what concerns me. What concerns me is being able to continuously repeat these tasks without attaching any emotionality to any of the losses or any of the wins. So question is how to make trading boring. Is there a specific algorithm to make trading boring? What can I do to make trading boring? So number one naturally is going to be having a system, right? This is the cornerstone of what you do and what you do relies on. The cornerstone is obviously going to have some kind of system. Now, I don't know anyone that's like 100% discretionary that makes it work and does well, right? Someone that sits down every morning in the markets and says, all right, Let's just see what this market brings us. Click, 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 right? No plan, no nothing and actually succeeds, right? I don't believe in that necessarily. So for example, I trade auction market theory. This is more so a trading philosophy, right? Not a strategy in itself. However, it outlines for me the direction of the market, where it's setting up and where I can trade, right? The general expected direction. It's not going to be 100% foolproof, but with the understanding of auction theory, I can generally have a good idea of what side I want to take on the trade and where. So the whole aspect of this is to be able to continuously do the mundane same thing over and over and over again, except that it's always not going to work. That's another big factor, right? Trading strategy, if they have 50%, 60% win rates, right? There's positive expectancy. Those are the ones that are going to do well. You're going to have a long period of success with those because if you have a two to one, a three to one risk to reward, that's where that success comes from. So, in terms of accepting that it's not going to be 100%, it's not always going to work, you still want to follow those steps and the system, even if it doesn't, right? You want to continuously do it, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. So traders have to have a composition of rules to follow, right? I'm a very firm believer for this, not only for their strategy in terms of, okay, this is how I read it, this is how I enter, but also for risk management, right? How much risk am I taking on the day per trade? What is my general profit target? Because a lot of people, they might be hitting some pretty good numbers on a day to day basis, but they're just they're like, why? When do I stop? What do you mean? When do you stop? What do you think that that's a very ridiculous question for me? You should have a number in mind that should satisfy you, right? You hit that profit goal and then you just walk away for the day. There's no like in one single day. What's the pot? What's, what's the best possible outcome? You're most likely not going to be making a million dollars in that one given day, right? You're not going to miss something massive, right? You're not going to miss something grand that you're never going to see again. Right. That's the reality of it. People have FOMO. They look at things they're like, oh, my God, um, I missed this massive move yesterday. Well, first of all, would you have caught it? Second of all, would you have stayed in it? Right. So the answer is generally no. So you're not going to miss anything. If you have a profit goal, you hit that. Boom. The day is yours. You don't want to be that trader that sits in front of the computer for eight hours a day, 10 hours a day, trying to just like scalp things or like move things around and and generate the max profit possible. So this general premise um, of boring mundane trading is just setting up your trades based on a plan and executing when that happens. It's a rule based system that you follow through and through and you keep rinsing and repeating. So let me give you an idea of what it is that I've done over the last few days. And we'll talk about the second part of this, right? How to make things boring, how to make um, sets of rules and whatnot. So for example, NASDAQ here, I've been trading this a lot more since volatility is a little dropped off. Um, especially in the S&P 500. So for the start of the week, for the start of the week, what we got going on, right? My my trade philosophy is around auction theory. So realistically, if I grab this area over here based on this 200-day profile, this area, and then we got a little spot over here. And well, okay, let's just start off with this. So generally speaking, this is the main large distribution that I'm looking at on the NASDAQ. So it's a huge area with like very thick volume. This is what a, this is what we call a balance. So when price is inside of a balanced area, it tends to hold inside of that balance. If I get failures outside of the balance, meaning that there's no session closes below that balance and we move back within, I'm going to look for longs in the market, right? I'm going to look for longs to continue to trade the other side of that balance. So it's very simple in that regard. I want to be a buyer at the auction low, right? And I want to continue the buy side when we get through these little divots. Now, some of these, obviously, especially into this area, I have an idea of, okay, maybe I can sell something realistically over here, over here at this ledge. So I've got two areas that will offer some kind of resistance. So I know that these distributions within, there's going to be some kind of resistance based on these ledges, based on where there's very heavy volume, right? But generally speaking, 
My main premise is I want to trade the tops and the bottoms of these balances in terms of how they react. So on NASDAQ, right, I take like one, two trades a day. This was on the 7th. So the 7th around that 160, 170 prices were failing, right? Where is that area? It's this auction block over here within the distribution, realistically. And you have a lot of heavy volume from the prior session. So in this area, there's some kind of expected resistance. You got, you got some kind of expected resistance. And especially since the overnight session, right, I'm looking at the overnight session kind of fails to go on the bid, we actually close lower on the overnight session. So I'm looking at this as continuation. So I take a little short here on the minis. And again, two to three lots, I'm just taking my take profit around 30 to 40 points, and then I'm done. That's it. It's all I have to do is realistically, if I'm making 100 120 points a day on the on the minis here on NASDAQ, right, so about two grand over two grand, that's it, I'm done, everything is good to go. So when we come down into the bottom of the balance, right into the session that closes this same session, and we can't close below my thought process is okay, realistically, I can buy this area. This is this is the big juicy region that, that I need to buy. I that's all I want to do. I want to buy the extremes if we fail, or I can sell the extremes if we fail if we move outside like we've seen today, right, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be buying dips, right on the overnight session today, right? I'm going to be looking for a 320 or 370 area. And I'm going to be trying to buy those dips to continue that leg. That's it, right? Two simple setups, two simple rules. I'm not going to go crazy and think, oh, okay, well, what happens if I take a loss on this? What if this isn't a good trade? That's fine. I move on, right? This is the part of the system. I already have these things broken down and I know what to do. I don't care if I take the loss, right? I just move on and continue with the next trade. So the way I do it on a day-to-day -day basis is like, I'll have one, two setups preemptively, and then I just want to take those. So if we get rid of a lot of this stuff right here and we just focus, okay, this is the bottom band area of this larger auction. We failed to close this day, which tells me that buyers should hold the bottom band. So what happens on this, right? I buy it on the overnight pretty much right away and I take a loss, right? I take a loss, like three, four contracts down about like 20, 30 points on these each. So I take a big take a big beat down, right? But the thought process is, if we can move back above aggressively, right on this overnight, they should hold the criteria of this balance holding. So okay, I get along again. And then this is the move, right? I get like 80 90 points out of this, right? $20 per point per contract out of like four of these. So that's it. Boom, done. That's all I had to do trade the bottom of that auction, it can go to the other side of the auction. I just don't really care to hold it that much, especially when I'm trading these minis, because there's a lot of risk behind it. So if I continue on with the day, right, the remainder of the day, we come into another key factor. This is what I talked about. So this block over here is the first top of the distribution. So I know at these areas, there's generally going to be some kind of failure in price. Unless we close back above it, there's some kind of failure in price. If we close back above it, that means that I want to be a buyer and I'm just going to buy that area, right? It's very simple. So, okay, I take a short, again, about like 40 points here, done. That's it. We make a move up into the close and we close above that area. So theoretically, I should be getting long at that region. That's it. I've just solidified. I want to be long from that area. And that's based on the set of rules and system that I have. I don't have to think what if X, Y, Z happens. I've already constructed this, this strategy and system. So I get long a little preemptively. I get stopped out like by a few points. This doesn't have to enrage someone, right? You know that realistically well, over the long term, if you keep trading this, maybe the entry wasn't the best, you're going to have success. So I say, you know what, whatever. Down, down on this, right? Took a little loss over there. Same concept, you move above the new auction, what happens? Bullish. I don't want to fade against this. I want to follow my strategy and system that says if we accept outside of a balance, you are going to be in balance. So we buy that dip, gets a nice little run, 50, 60 points, a bit more, close it, done. Read on the day, very nicely, overtakes the loss completely and that's it. So what I've just described right here is being able to just push aside the fact that you're potentially going to take a loss or even the win and just trade that system in front of you. It's the repetition over and over again behind the system. I have the rules based on this system, on this strategy, and I just execute based on that. And if I can continuously repeat this, repeat this, and as you've seen, right, it's like one to two trades on a day-to-day -day basis. That's what my system provides for me, right? These like larger key areas that have the highest probability of finding a move. So 
With that, like I said earlier, you need to have a set of rules to follow. The list of rules defines how you trade, right? Where you enter, where you enter, where you exit, and the risk that revolves around. So this is all about repetition. The more you do it, the more you see it works, the more you build out your confidence in trading psych. So a lot of you may be thinking, okay, but but what about trading psych, trading psychology? Isn't that number one? Isn't that the main thing that's supposed to get you to this point? Well, realistically, right, you accept risk. You understand that any trade you take can be good or bad. It can be a winner. It can be a loser. Whether it's a good trade, it still can be a loser. You see this long that I just had today. Good trade, it was a loser. And if I respect all my rules, right, longevity of this and the probability of it lasting and actually having success increases drastically. So when you repeat your rules and respect them, you build out a cycle. And this is this is what's important. This is how the boredom starts. You're, what you're trying to do is build a habit out of the rules that engulf your trading strategy. Build out a habit and build out a cycle. So just as you would build out a cycle when you get into bad habits, for example. So if you have bad habits in trading, you develop the cycle consciously or subconsciously. You now have a cycle. In this case, when you're creating bad habits, you want to break that cycle. It's a much, much harder process. For example, let's say a trader takes a loss, right? And the cycle reaction is to jump into another trade to revenge trade it to make that loss back. Whatever the trade is, they get out of a trade, they jump into a trade right away, right? So you get into this rabbit hole of revenge trading, of losses, random trades, you blow out, you over trade, whatever the case is, there's no strategy behind it. There might have been a strategy at the start, but the second you take that first loss, everything just evaporates. So you would want to break that cycle, which starts at the first reaction loss. So if you take a loss, you know what the reaction looks like. And at that point, you have to take a break of the cycle, right? One of the ways you walk away, you leave it alone, take the time between, analyze a trade and look for something that actually follows your plan. So it's much, much harder to break a cycle of bad habits than it is to develop a cycle of good habits, right? Especially when it comes to trading. But this is a huge aspect. Rule number one of pretty much creating that boredom around trading, making it mundane. You make something mundane, you, you repeat it a lot. And you do the same actions without any emotional attachment to the outcome. So just as you was create a strong cycle that is repetitive, that's how you create that emphasis on boredom. So diligence, right, is required, obviously. The more that you focus and you're serious about this, the higher probability you'll have as a trader to actually make it, right? So there are a lot of different strategies. It's dependent on how you trade them. That's what it comes down to. Any strategy realistically can be profitable. It's just how do I trade my strategy that creates an outcome? So I'm a truly, truly a believer in boring trading is the way to stop losing money. If I can create boredom around my trading, my mundane same little setups and the same way that I trade on any given day, that's the beauty about the, the system that I use based on auction theory. No matter what the market condition is, slow or fast, I know where I want to trade, and if that trade appears, I take it. That's it. That's it, right? So realistically, it does take a lot of discipline, but first, you're going to have to find a strategy that fits with you. For example, traders that I work with, like most of them, they trade auction theory, but they have different personalities, meaning that some might tweak it where they're looking for these massive large levels, and they might take a few trades a week. Some trade in between the balances, and they look for maybe smaller swings at selective levels. So some might be more so on the order flow from. But whatever it is, you have a list of rules that you're following so you can build out that cycle and build out that repetition around the system, right? Also, with reviewing it, just as you would build out a cycle and a habit of actually trading the system, you want to build out a cycle of reviewing it because that's what solidifies the system that you're trading. So a journal review on a day-to-day -day basis, X, Y, Z. So you can compare it to the, to the plan from the strategy and see how you actually did make the tweaks so you can continuously do that same thing over and over and over again. Like I said, my system revolves around me understanding where price is balanced or imbalanced. So if we're moving outside of a balanced area right now, I want to be a buyer at two areas. That's it. I've got two levels where the buy should hold and I'm going to get active there. And that's it. Whatever happens, happens. If it works, great. If it doesn't work, then that's okay. We have something to consider for future trades, right? Maybe new information, whatever the case may be. We have something else. It's not going to end there. I don't have to get into spamming different trades to make that money back. So with that being said, 
the main way that I actually stopped losing money and even was able to progress towards making money, let alone actually making money, is when I started to make trading a repetitive, boring, mundane task. You're here to do something very specific. A lot of traders get it twisted. They get they get like a foggy mind in terms of what it is that they're supposed to be doing or why that why they're doing it, right? If you find your reason as to why, that's where the focus starts. That's where the discipline starts. So you can start moving towards that. If you're looking at it, you're like, I just want a shitload of money. I want Lambos. I want this and that. Well, the reality of the situation is there's no real drive behind that. So there's no real focus to actually make this thing work. You need to have something that's very, very concrete, whether whatever it might be to be rich, right? Big deal. Realistically, you're in a zero sum game to make money. But the more you focus on the P&L and the more you're pressing towards that, the less focus you have on actually trading those rules, doing it repetitively. So with that being said, I hope everyone enjoyed this video, got a lot out of it and made you really reframe and rethink the way that you're going about the markets, right? The mentality that you have around the market. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, drop a comment down below and check out community.tradeproacademy.com where we have our open discord and you guys will get a lot of different updates through email. So I'll see you guys next time.